men. Ah, George. Thank heaven they sent you. How are you, boy? A bit rocky, but all right otherwise. <laughs> and you, Sam? Oh, fit as a fiddle. It's against regulations to feel any other way on the wheel. My own orders. Come on, sit down. I said, well, I didn't know until a half hour ago that they were sending you up. You remember my son, Barney, don't you? Dr. Fenton helped to plan every detail of this wheel, Barney. They thought we were insane then, didn't they, George? Well, frankly, I thought so, too. But here it is. You put it up here. <laughs> you know, for once, the international authority has really sent up somebody who knows what it's all about. And since you are one of the geniuses responsible for that monstrosity, would you mind telling me what it is? We assembled this thing piece by piece as it came up, according to your brilliant specifications. It's a masterpiece of technology and electronics. But it doesn't make one particle of sense. In just what way do you mean? Well, here. Take these wings, for instance. What in blazes are wings doing on this ship? There's no atmosphere on the moon. The moon? And this booster, all that power. What are we going to do, go up to the moon or going through it? Or maybe we're supposed to tow it back with us so those bright boys from every nation on Earth can have a better look at it. Is that the idea? Working for one government was bad enough. But now we've got all of them on our backs. I think you'd better read your orders. General. General? Your promotion is among the dispatches. Congratulations, sir. A general. Your order, Sam. For you, Captain, you're transferred. You'll be attached to Murak, I believe, as you requested. You can return with me if you like. Mars. Mars, sir? George, this is fantastic. No more so than going to the moon. Mars isn't the moon. A slight difference of several million miles. Not one word. No warning. Just take off and leave. Just across the solar system. I tell you, we're not ready, George. Why wasn't I consulted? only reached the decision yesterday. There was some discussion about your age and, well, General Cronin convinced the authorities... And who you... convinced Cronin? You? A long time ago, the Supreme Council issued an order that the final objective of this project was to be the planet Mars. You were present at all those discussions. The moon was never anything more than just a test hop. Now the orders are to eliminate the test and proceed with the original plan. Time makes it imperative. There's only one man who can take that ship to another planet and bring it back. The man who built the wheel. To gamble the lives of a crew of men on a senseless mission as this is callous. It's stupid. Stupid or callous it may seem to be at this time. It is not senseless. Man's very survival on Earth depends upon the success of this or some future search for a new source of raw materials. General Samuel T. Merritt. Very imposing title. For a tombstone. The orders are naturally contingent to your acceptance, General. You can refuse. When do we leave? I never refuse to obey an order, Captain. I never have either, sir. Until now. When do we leave? Our previous orders were to leave the wheel, proceed to the moon, orbit for observation, make a landing, and return to base. These orders have now been canceled. We're not going to the moon. Mr. Fenton has brought us a new director. Our 
Our time of departure will be 11.36 tomorrow morning. Our destination, the planet Mars. Now, that time of departure, both for the outer trip from the wheel to Mars and for the return from Mars to the wheel, is most important. We must arrive at the Martian orbit at the exact time when it is occupied by the planet. Obviously, the same precision of timing applies for our return. Now, you five men have been chosen after intensive competitive examinations. For the past year, you've been receiving special training and instruction for travel into outer space. The ship, however, can accommodate only two officers and three crewmen. I have been assigned as commanding officer. All other service on this trip will be voluntary. Since Captain Merritt has already volunteered, there are only three berths left open. Two of you, then, are going to be disappointed. I can take it, sir. That the dangers of this journey are above and beyond anything that the Space Corps or your own governments have any right to ask of. I can give you a confounded little reason for this attempt to reach Mars. And no assurance at all that it will even be successful. It's my personal conviction that no one but an idiot would volunteer. And I shall strongly suspect the sanity of anyone who does. All right, we've all got it straight. Who wants to go? Is it permitted to disagree with the general, sir? Of course, Sergeant. In my humble opinion, sir, there is an excellent reason for this voyage. Well, suppose you tell us about it. Some years ago, my country chose to fight a terrible war. It was bad. I do not defend it. But there were reasons. Somehow, those reasons are never spoken of. To the Western world at that time, Japan was a ferry boat nation. Little people living in a strange land of rice paper houses. People who had almost no furniture. Who sat on the floor and ate chopsticks. The quaint houses of rice paper, sir. They were made of paper because there was no other material available. And the winters in Japan are as cold as they are in Boston. And the chopsticks. There was no metal for forks and knives and spoons where slivers of wood could suffice. So it was with the little people of Japan, little as I am now. Because for countless generations, we have not been able to produce the food to make us bigger. Japan's yesterday will be the world's tomorrow. Too many people and too little land. That is why I say, sir, there is urgent need for us to reach Mars, to provide the resources the human race will need if they are to survive. That is also why I am most grateful to be unacceptable, sir. I volunteer. Thank you, Sergeant Emoto. You're not a little man. I'll go, sir. Well, sir. Well, I hate to see everybody eat with chopsticks, so check! To you men, our thanks for your patience and all your sacrifices. The Earth rocket leaves in two hours. Get packed up. Huh? Dismissed. Speech maker, chopsticks.